to serve you and many other folks in the South Carolina Senate. I never dreamed growing up that I would have that opportunity, and people have been good to me. Uh, they have been extremely good to me, and I have tried in return to be good to them. Uh, I met folks like Richard when I first started running, and we have been friends for longer than either one of us would like to remember, Kathy Rawls. I had the opportunity when I first ran to run in five counties, Lexington, Aiken, Bamberg, Marlin, and Edgefield counties, about 300,000 people uh, in this election when I got elected the first time. And when we had the recount, they kept telling us we had won, but they didn't think we'd win in the recount. But guess what? In the bottom of one of the boxes in one of the counties, they found 100 ballots for me wrapped together by Don, if you remember, it had not been counted. So we got 100 votes in the recount because it stuck them in the bottom of the box. Uh, but let me say this to you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve you in the South Carolina Senate. It is a tremendous, tremendous honor. One that I do not take lightly. One that I take the responsibility very seriously. One that has been, allowed me to grow as an individual because I've had the opportunity to meet folks from all walks of life in South Carolina. I grew up, my mother and father ran a hammer hot dog restaurant in West Columbia for 44 years. Uh, they worked 12 to 16 hours a day. It is a drive through uh, home of the ranch burger and the hot dog. For those of you who don't know, I started catching curve when I was eight years old. But you learn that, there are, that everybody Every single individual in this state is important, regardless of what their age is, regardless of what their race is, regardless of what their sex is. They are all important, and they all are affected by what we do in the South Carolina General Assembly. This election is going to be about 21st century South Carolina. It's about jobs. It's about people being able to work. It's about having plants and facilities like Amazon, 200, 2,000 jobs with full-time benefits and health insurance, and people didn't want to bring them to South Carolina. People who are in this race didn't want them to come to South Carolina. It's about Bridgestone. It's about Continental. It's about Michelin. It's about public education and providing a quality education to every child in South Carolina, regardless of where they live in South Carolina. I ask you to get active, I ask you to support me, and I thank you for letting me be here today. I take uh, invitations from Bill Starnes and Richard John others, and I uh, am particularly pleased to, to have this meeting in the Union Hall. You know, you don't find many of them in South Carolina, and that's just bad. That's one of the problems with South Carolina's economy. And if we can do better with the union folks, we can do better for South Carolina and everybody in South Carolina. So I'm glad to be here. And that's what we need to work on and focus on in this upcoming election. Um, speaking of this upcoming election, uh, uh, Senator Sessler and his lovely wife, Ada Jane, have been mentioned or introduced earlier, but I have to tell you a story about them, and this is this is really the truth. First of all, Ada Jane, or Taylor as we knew her then, was my student. When, when she was at Columbia College, she was my student, and that was back in, I'm afraid to say it, a sh <laughs> back in 95, wasn't it? But it's been a few years ago, and um, I actually met Senator Sessler through her. And in 1976, uh, when Jimmy Carter was running for president, there were a lot of changes going on in the way the Senate was apportioned, and it was very different than it is now. And Senator Sessler decided he was going to run, or uh, now Senator Sessler decided he was going to run for the state Senate. And his opponent was Joe Wilson. Uh, <laughs> and, his opponent was, and you know, most people say, oh, well, Joe Wilson's going to be Jimmy Sessler, that's not much of a race. Well, the election came, and, and we had it, and Jimmy Carter won, and I was a state chair then, and I was out doing stuff, and I really got, literally got home about 4.30 or 5 a.m., and I sat down on the bed, the telephone rang, 
and it was Ada Jane, and she said, Don, I think we've won. <laughs> I said, are you kidding? She said, yes. And she says, but there's only, what, seven or eight votes difference or something like that. 157 votes difference. Okay. The only one that's ever been done. Some of the boxes were still out. And I told her to call any sheriff she knew in anywhere in the district. And then there were three or four counties, including this one in Edgefield and Saluda, and tell them to go get those boxes, put them in the cell, and lock the cell door, and don't let anybody touch them. And she did that, I think. And anyway, I called a few uh, sheriffs, and they did lock them up and had a long proceeding and recount. And Nicky won. That was in 1976, and he's been a senator since then. He's going to be a senator next year, too, if you all vote and go support. I want to introduce my wife, uh, Carol, who is uh, uh, was chair of South Carolina Democratic Party. Um, I talked to Mr. Harold Crawford a few minutes ago. And uh, he was telling me he had a migraine headache. And I don't know if any of you all oh, know what a migraine headache is. It's a real, very intense headache. And my son, so we talked about that a little bit. But when you get a migraine, it's not like taking a two aspirin and chucking it off and go back to work. Migraines are very difficult. Well, America has a migraine headache now, and it's called the Republican Party. Right? And we've got to get rid of those people who want government society to be just for the rich and not for the every person. Now, I have been in politics all my life, and I've been a, been a party official, and I've talked politics and government, and so this has been real a whole lifetime study and a lifetime pursuit for me. But you can hear all kinds of speeches that are made about what the Democrats are and what the Republicans are and why you should be a Democrat and why you shouldn't be a Republican and all of this. So there's one very fundamental, simple thing about the Democratic Party as opposed to the Republican Party. The Democratic Party is for giving equal opportunity Everybody is making the working people, business people, school teachers, and engineers, everybody politically equal with an equal chance. The Republican Party wants to, wants to set the American economy so nobody does good except the rich. Now, that's the way the Republican Party does, and that's the difference between Republicans and Democrats, and that's why we have to win this year. Don't let anybody tell you that we can't win in South Carolina. Nicky Sessler can win, we can win other legislative seats, and we can win the presidential race. I heard on the radio the other night that Carl Rove, how many of you know who Carl Rove is? Yeah. Carl Rove was George Bush's number one political uh, uh, political aide. He did all of his strategy, did all of his maneuvering, all of his plots to screw people out of what they deserve. He said on television the other night that South Carolina was a toss-up state, and we, he didn't wasn't sure that, that Governor Romney could win South Carolina. Now, Carl Rove, that's probably the first true state he's ever said. So, but he said there must be something there for us to look at, and I think we should. Uh, we should take that seriously because nobody has lost and nobody has won until the votes are counted. And there are more people who are seeing the light about what George Romney is and what he, he, the policies that he's pursuing. And people recognize that he is not good for America. Barack Obama is good for America. He needs to be returned to office, and he will if you and I and all the rest of us do what we want to do. And I think that we all need to go and vote for Barack Obama and make sure all our friends and neighbors do as well. Barack Obama should be reelected. <laughs> <laughs> One vote is always important. You hear a lot of people say, well, I'm just one vote. It won't make any difference what I do. 
just one vote. If I vote one way or another, it won't make any difference because there will be thousands and millions of, of, of votes. Well, let me tell you a story, two stories. One happened a long time ago, and one happened just a few years ago. In the Constitutional Convention, when the vote was taken on whether or not the Constitutional Convention, the people, the delegates there in 1787 would adopt the Constitution that we now have, they voted by state. Every state was equal. South Carolina was equal to Virginia, and Pennsylvania was equal to Massachusetts, and so forth. It, they voted by state. And uh, the vote was seven to six. Seven states for, six states against, one vote. The deciding vote in that meeting was from Rhode Island. There were seven delegates from Rhode Island at that convention. And in their little caucus, they had a vote to uh, ratify or not to ratify. And it was four to three. One vote. And that's how the Constitution was adopted by the Constitutional Convention and sent to America, and that's the Constitution we live on, uh, under now. About 20 years ago, there was a, an election in Aiken a special election for a city council seat. And it was an open election. That is, it wasn't done by party because it was a special election. But everybody knew who the Democrat was and who the Republican was. And there was a lot of stiff campaigning. And you know, in a, in a, in a city election like that, a special election, not many people vote. Well, there were about 400 and something voted then. And you know what the vote was? Absolutely tied. Not one vote different. And they looked around and fiddled around and looked at all the ballots and looked at the ones that some thought were fog and it still came out. Absolutely tied. So what did they do? Have another vote. Two weeks. Same two people, same crowd. About the same level of vote, you know what happened? Absolutely tight. <laughs> Second time. Absolutely tight. So they put it off, had another election in, in two more weeks, had another vote, and the Democrat won by three votes. <laughs> now, both of those stories indicate that every vote counts. Your vote counts, your family's vote counts, your friends. So make sure that you and all your friends and all your family go vote and vote for the Democratic candidates, Nikki Sessler, to Barack Obama, and everybody in between. Thank you.